Hey Facebook, this is the inaugural episode of Wine About Life, a new series I'm doing with different business leaders and entrepreneurs in the community to get to know their story and what made them the person that they are. First uh, guest here is going to be with Jan Leisure from Diamond Residential Mortgage. If you'd like to be participating with me, drink some wine, talk about your story, send me a message. Thanks again for watching, appreciate it. Talk about what made Jan the person that she is the leader in this community, uh, and just have her discuss a little bit about herself. So, uh, cheers, Jan, hey, and cheers, uh, thanks Nick. for Thank you. being part of the inaugural version of this. I'm Jan Leisure. I am the division president of Diamond Residential Mortgage in Libertyville, mm -hmm. and uh, we are the local premier lender. We hope. Um, in the area. Yeah. So the away. so the biggest thing that I'm I'm super passionate about is that everybody's got a story and everybody has uh, something that's unique about them that made them the person that they are. It might be an experience. It might be some things that you went through or a process that you that just defines who you are now. There are some things that made me who I am today, and I think it started when I was about 15 years old. Uh, I was an only child, and when I was 15 years old. Uh, my dad had a massive coronary and he was hospitalized for three months. Simultaneous to that, uh, my boyfriend at the time, who was my childhood friend from the time I was two years old, was diagnosed with osteogenic sarcoma, which is a form of bone cancer. Wow. And uh, I was instrumental in getting him to tell his parents that he was not okay. And uh, they got him to the doctor the doctor saved him my dad was saved but i spent about a 90-day period before my 16th birthday uh in lutheran general hospital visiting them and you know hoping that they were going to be okay being their cheerleader um later take making my boyfriend take me to the mall and to parties and to school sure. because he was going around on one leg and some crutches and i think in retrospect what that taught me was that life is short and people are very very important and I don't believe that in all the years that followed, and I won't say how many, um, that I, that's my, um, that's my mantra, is that life is very short and people are super important and you have to make the best of every single day. And I also, I take that into my business. Um, I felt the same way uh, when I became a parent. Sure. And I give a thousand percent to everything that I do, to my family, to my um to my employees, um, and to my clients. How's that uh, adjusted, like your leadership focus when, whether it's interacting with people here at the branch or in the community? Um, like, how do you take that mindset now that you went through all of that uh, to change the interactions that you're doing on like a day to day basis, even? Well, I think what happens is it takes any disingenuousness out of what you're doing. Sure. Because people recognize when you real that you really care. Um, at, you and I didn't discuss this, but I was a taught a school teacher for 20 years. Right. I taught junior high school English <laughs> for 20 years before I got into this business, and I also was a um, was a college instructor. I taught college English principles of real estate for another 10 years, and. Um, I was also a syndicated columnist for 35 years, all simultaneously. Sure. You know, or I would turn to dust in front of you on this on this video. But I've done a lot of different things, and I try. I've I have had the same the same mindset um, throughout my entire career, and it, and all the many different hats that I wear and have worn in the past. Um, and the best advice that I could ever give to anyone is to take a step back, get to know your family and your sure. customers and your parents and your children and your um, your local merchants. And you know, if people can recognize how much you care about them, I think you get not only more out of your business, but you get more out of your life as well. Because of the things that you went through, that you were able to share your life experiences with somebody to make a difference for somebody who may not, or may have been starting to go through something like that, where you really made an impact. So maybe it was with teaching, maybe it was with uh, even doing the mortgages, but where somebody needed you to carry that load for them. Like you, you needed to carry that load for them. Well, for sure. Help. For sure it was with teaching. Um, I, I had 36 kids in a class, six classes a day. So the sure. people, people that are complaining when they have 15 <laughs> students in a class, you know, and they're overloaded, I can't relate to that. Um, but not only, I mean, this wasn't just a lesson. It's a, it, it's an honest interaction with people. Cause I really, right. I really did care. I think kids, even the difficult kids could, um, could tell how much I cared about them. And I, and I still do, and I'm still in touch with so many of them. Uh, 
throughout the year. I do have one um, one very emotional story that has to do sure. with the mortgage business. So when I had been a loan officer for um, probably probably less than a year, I was approached by uh, a Hispanic family from Waukegan who were losing their home. They were losing their home to foreclosure. And they had a son uh, who was in a wheelchair and he um, he was very, very incapacitated by cerebral palsy. And the mom, uh, the mom was working at St. Therese Hospital in the custodial division. And the dad um, worked on a, on a local farm. We actually do have some farms in Libertyville. <laughs> And he, they didn't have a lot of they didn't have a lot of income coming in. It was pretty much an impossible situation. Uh, but I devoted all of my time to that, and I was able to get was able to get a bank to refinance their first. I was ready to get a local. Uh, I was able to get a local business person to do a fifteen thousand dollars second mortgage for him because we we certainly couldn't get any secondary financing in order right. in order to follow the guidelines. Um, and then we were able to get everyone else to donate their services for free. So a title company participated. We had an attorney that participated, and that took probably it took the better part of maybe ninety or one hundred and twenty days for me to be able to do that. Sure. But when we got finished, um, we saved the house for the family. The young man was able to stay in his house and not be displaced, which right. was it was huge. Um, a huge benefit to them because I think that he he maybe would not he wouldn't have made it um, as long as he did and he lived for another 10 years and then uh, sadly he did pass away but when that happened um, they were still in their home and I that's something that I look back on and that was about 20 years ago but I would say I've had a lot I've had a lot of high points and low points in my career as a loan officer but I think that that was probably um, the most emotional and the most gratifying um, transaction that I participated in. To switch gears up a little bit, um, similar subject, but switching gears just a bit, uh, you've got a nickname, um, I think, in this in this world. Do you want to say what that is? I do. I'm the Lake <laughs> County Lone Goddess. And how did you get that nickname? Uh, I got that name from a client. Um, we He was looking for a home in Waukegan, and he purchased... Um, he purchased an 11 bedroom uh, home that used to be um, a place where the nuns lived. And his plan was actually to make it into kind of a big house, like on, on the theme of the Friends uh, television show. You know? <laughs> and that again was a very, that was a very difficult transaction. Sure. Uh, the place had old boilers and it's a very old home and we had to negotiate with the priest and the priest liked me. <laughs> <laughs> So we were able to, you know, we were able to get the boiler replaced. Okay, get, makes more get, sense yeah, now. Get some of the. Oh, I, I, don't you'll make me blush. Um, we were able to get the boiler replaced and get the roof replaced, and he purchased it. This is a little while ago for one hundred and fifteen thousand um, dollars. He sure. never, he never was able to get a permit from the city to actually um, culminate what his project was going to be. But he had the house for a very long time, and by the time when we got finished and we were at the closing, he said, "You are a lone goddess." <laughs> So I took it. Anything else you want to say about uh, what do you offer unique to this community that could be of interest to anybody who's watching this video that may be even a little bit more niche? So you do amazing mortgages. And as you said in the beginning, uh, love to be everybody's go to. But like, is there anything niche that you do that might be unique? So even if they have a guy, well, Jan does this, though. So I, I think I should call her about this. Yeah, I do, I do a couple of things. And most recently, I went back to school. So I do have a bachelor's. I do have a master's. So I have, as far as education is concerned, I do have a lot to offer to my clients as far as problem solving, and this is a business of problem solving. Um, you know, you can go on the internet sometimes if you're lucky and you can get a mortgage if you qualify. And they're, they're, Mortgages are kind of tricky to do, but most recently uh, I went back to school and I got certified as a CLDP, which is a certified mortgage divorce lender. Um, it was a, um, it's a pretty, little bit of a lengthy class and some, you know, some testing involved. And I am going to be working, I do work with attorneys as it is, but I am going to be working with more divorce attorneys and trying to, um, trying to reach clients who are thinking of getting a divorce, who are in the process of divorce, 
before they get to a very desperate point right. where they might lose their house. Um, one of the things that we've always done in our office um, is analyze credit, help people with their credit, try to get yep. them to a point where they can purchase a home. And in this case, we might be dealing with people who started out with good credit, but sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes the divorce situation can get a little bit contentious. Sure. People decide that they're not going to pay their pay their mortgage or pay their yep. bills because they're angry, and we try to. Or to, even I've heard of times where like there's a structured plan that it's supposed to be paid a certain way, and a trustee doesn't pay it or something like that, and it messes with somebody's well, credit for as well. Sure. When everyone's trying to do it by the book, so the, yeah, there's right, unique so circumstances. We wanted we want to build a good team and be a part of a number of different teams so that we can um, we can create a situation where people can not only stay in their homes but they can retain their credit so that when they do go their separate ways, whether they keep their home, sell their home, you know, move on to another situation, that they don't have to wait seven years because they had a foreclosure or they had a bankruptcy on their credit and they can't really start over because I think that that only, and I am, I am divorced, so I think that sure. that only adds, um, you know, more pain to an already painful situation. Well, at least it, nobody wants to go through that situation, but knowing that if you're working with Jan, that she does know that that situation uh, firsthand. So I think that's, that might help some people as well, that they, they don't feel ostracized. They don't feel, um, they don't feel different that, you know, this painful events going on. So that's, well, I, that's good. I appreciate, I appreciate that. And I think that having gone through that experience, um, you're right. Having gone through that experience does give you a unique perspective. Um, and not only not, not only can we do a <clears throat> compassionate, loan you know i don't i i have never heard that before but sure. you know i think we can do a compassionate loan right um there's a lot of empathy involved and there's also a lot of hard work involved in that too so the borrowers uh the borrowers the couple that's getting divorced their attorneys everybody has to be a part of the team for the best interest of the people and i think that that's um that that's critical good how would people try to get if they wanted to get a hold of you what's the best way to do that uh, the best way to do that would be to call our office at 847-362-1335. I can be reached by text on my cell phone. I can be reached by email. I'm very easy to find. So if you Google, Google Jan Leisure, L-E-A-S-U-R-E. Or probably Loan Goddess, Or Loan too. Goddess, yes, or Lake County Loan Goddess. Hey guys, thanks again for watching the Wine About Life series. If you're a business leader, community leader, or entrepreneur, and you want to share your story about what made you the person you are, send me a direct message. We have a subscription to Gary V's Wine Empathy Club, and so we're going to be sampling those as we talk about your story and what made you the person that you are. Again, send me a direct message, and we'll get you on the show. Thanks again, guys.